the Dual Test Drive 2 hit the world in 1989, however it is unclear as to which was the lead platform, the Amiga or the PC on the MS-DOS. So we'll start off with the MS-DOS version. Like the original test drive, the focus of the Dual is driving exotic cars through dangerous highways, evading traffic and trying to escape the police pursuits. While the first game in the series had the player simply racing for time in a single scenario, Test Drive 2 improves upon its predecessor by introducing varied scenery and giving the player the option of racing against the clock or competing against a computer controlled opponent. The console and computer versions differ when it comes to content, with the consoles being better off. The computer versions of the game provided one course, referred to by the game as Mast Scenery consisting of several stages. Each stage had one of three possible locations. A desert with cacti along the side of the road, a mountain with a sheer rock wall on one side of the highway and a cliff on the other, and occasionally a tunnel through the mountain, and a grassy area with trees. There were four available courses in the console version of the game, each of varying length and difficulty. Each is a route on a public highway in a different part of the US. The courses included are Desert Blast, easy, seemingly takes place somewhere in the US Southwest, City Bound, medium, it's not entirely clear where this takes place but in various parts of the course Mount Rushmore can be seen. East Coast, hard, takes place in Eastern US with the last section of the course including a view of the New England coast. West Coast, hardest, takes place in the US West Coast and is the longest and most difficult course in the game. The Seattle Skyline and Space Needle can be seen in the beginning parts of the course. The console version has three available cars, compared to the two of the home computer ports. Although some home computers did get data discs released at a later date with more cars and courses. I can imagine a lot of the younger viewers of this video having a right laugh at this game, but let me tell you, back in the day this was an awesome title as this Amiga version shows. The game for its time looked really nice and had a realistic form of handling. Cars would under and oversteer. You'd have to stop for fuel and the collision detection was quite close to a real driving position. Compared to the PC version, this Amiga release is far better in every department, from the way it looks and sounds to how it plays. Let's hope all the other ports live up to this one. Here we are with the Atari ST version, which looks and sounds very much like the Amiga version, but it doesn't play like the Amiga version. I don't know why, but this ST port is very difficult to control. The steering is just way too sensitive, resulting in some very horrible controls.
Apple II GS version here and it seems to suffer from control issues again. Not as bad as the Atari ST port, but nowhere near the level of smoothness found in the Amiga game. As you can see, the graphics have also taken a hit with a much more narrow play area window and quite possibly less detail. It doesn't run as smooth either. A bit micro time starting with the ZX Spectrum. Yep, it is as you are all thinking. Crap. Very laggy controls, awful collision detection, and horrible sound. At least the cars are big. One good point, I guess. Sadly, this is also the same version that was ported to the MSX. Luckily for you, I couldn't get that working, so you don't have to sit through it. Next up is the Commodore 64 port. Straight away you can see this is a massive improvement over the sad attempt that appeared on the ZX Spectrum and MSX. This version keeps a lot of the original presentation, something I feel is very important when it comes to giving a game some character. It plays rather well too, although best to play with keyboard controls over joystick. Pushing up to accelerate while turning left or right is horrible. Amstrad CPC owners got the same drivel that was on the ZX Spectrum and MSX, but now in colour. It is better than the previous mentioned versions just because of how it looks, but that doesn't mean it's worth playing. Now this is more like it. Console time and we have a fantastic port here on the Mega Drive. Featuring more cars and courses than the base computer versions, this port has a lot to shout about, but it gets better. We now have dedicated accelerate and brake buttons and gear switches via a joypad. This really helps the gameplay a lot. The play mechanics have also been tweaked. The controls feel a lot more realistic than they did on the Amiga version which was good, but on the Mega Drive they feel much tighter. Sadly while racing, we have to listen to one of three pretty crappy music tracks. Oh well. Test Drive 2 And we've left the best until last. This is the Super Nintendo version a port that just blows away every other version of Test Drive 2 out there. Silky smooth road animations, great audio and fantastic car handling. 
The developers have really put some effort into this one to give an impression of feedback on a regular controller. It is even possible to spin the car. No other version has this. We also get weather effects which are in the Mega Drive game, but also more tracks to play on. If you've never played Test Drive 2, then this is the one you should choose. There's no contest at all. Take a look at all those versions of Test Drive 2 The Duel running side by side.